In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a tessellated roof structure based on a loft surface. We use a Grasshopper built-in panelling tool to generate a grid on the surface first. Then we'll apply 3D object pattern onto surface. The geometry can be parametrically controlled and the pattern will be simultaneously readapted onto surface. And let's begin. So under panelling tool tab, you can see Types are all categorized here quite nicely. So you, you will have a curve function. There are a number of type of way that you can control the curve under paneling tool. There's a grid and grid attractors, grid utilities, and 2D panel and 3D paneling, and panel utility and param. In this tutorial to create tessellated roof structure, we're gonna use grid function, panel 2D, and then panel 3D after. So let's start creating a lofty surface. Uh, I'm going to use polygon to get the base curve. And type polygon, I'll give, I'll give it 20 uh, to the segments, and I'll define the radius of 5, and I will need a couple of more curves that is exactly offset it. So I'm going to use offset curve. I'll do that twice and I'll connect that to polygon. And I will offset that by 5. And that goes to distance. And I'll copy that, paste it, and that goes to the second offset curve. Now we have three curves that have been offset it and you can obviously control the segments by sliding up and down here. I'm going to keep it 22 for now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give height to the second and third curve. And to do that you will need Z vector and obviously I'm going to give some parameter to Z vector. And all you need to do is copy all of these three, paste, that goes to the last curve. I'm going to turn these two off. By right click and turn off the preview. So now you've got these two curves separately all set up in the space. So basically, to create a loft, I covered this in the previous tutorial. There are different type of lofts. Uh, I'm going to use just standard loft, and you will have to feed it from top, mid, and the third. But this time, you will have to flatten this all to match all the data tree. And you'll have to copy that all again. And that has to go second and third. And you you can choose different type of option, uh, different type of loft options. Yeah. And this is quite important when it comes to 2D paneling. Uh, so let me just show you this as an example. Um, so we're gonna use this grid tool function here. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grab surface domain number. So this will define, this will set up the grid on the surface by UMV number. If you go there and type 25, give slider to each UMV number, it still flags up as red. So what you need to do here, you go to option, right click, loft option here, you get to choose different type of loft surface. So, so if I go back there again, you can close the loft, which means you have a donor shape surface and you can untick that. Go to, so to make this surface work, you'd have to rebuild this whole surface. That way, it will make it all one continuous surface. Instead of previously, you had a segregated surface. That doesn't always help when it comes to the paneling. So I'll move it quickly away from explaining a bit more, more of these two functions, but I can cover that in later, in other time, because we have a lot of other tools to cover in paneling tool tutorial, but since this is about surface, I'm going to focus just on the surface function. 
So let's use 2D panel just to show you the concept how it works and go and open this 2D panel and grab morph to the map. So this parameter, so this node asks you to have grid, which is this grid that goes here. Pattern curve, you will have to have a pattern that goes into in between this cell. So imagine that you will have to you you you've got a cell you've got a grid here. So this pattern curve will be placed in the middle of this grid. And I'll show you by showing you the, giving you the right example. So type circle here, simple as that. That goes to pattern curves, and you'll have to set the pattern by using boolean toggle fit there and refit there. So you see that circle has been placed on the surface. You could have, you you can choose to go with different shape to the pattern curves, and that will obviously will change all this shape that has been placed in the grid. So you could go polygon again here. Polygon. Polygon. The polygon goes to pattern. You've got different patterns applied. Alright, so since this isn't a, just about 2D pattern, uh, I'm going to delete this for now. I'll move on to 3D. So again, you will have to just use the same as previous tutorial. You could just choose to use Morph Surface Morph, or you can just come here and grab Morph 3D Map. So let's take a look at this node. So you, you'll need a first grid and second grid pattern object, just like a 2D pattern. Bounding object, so you, you will need to defi define the size of that object. Third, whether you want to flatten it or repeat it. So this, this will operate it by Boolean toggle. Pull, you can pull the whole grid, surface one and surface two. So that's been taken from grid one and two. So let's generate a second grid, which is simply define the depth of freedom, is to take this as a, a 3D object. So you obviously surfaces of just flattened, it's, it's not actually flattened, but this is 2D, two dimensional. So to give a bit of three dimensional depth, you will have to offset that. You could either offset the surface, which is the best practice. In this case, I'm gonna just use move in Z, obviously, can you just use addition to move the grid, or you can just move the move the. You can use the move tool just to, just to move the grid in Z direction. So this will give a you know the depth of the whole structure. So I'm gonna give somewhere around 0.5. And that goes to there. So we now have two grids. So the base grid and offsetted grid in Z direction. So let's bring it to home. So that goes to grid one and grid two. We need pattern object. So this is very important. Uh, to create a tessellated roof structure, you will have to understand this a bit better. And I will show you, I'll visualize this by using panel. 2D tool. So I'm going to use generate border because the grid. Hang on a sec, I'll simply use uh, cellulite. So that's just required grid. I'm going to turn this off for now, these two. Turn off, turn this off as well. So if you take a look here again, so this has been you know segregated into a number of cells okay to give this tessellated pattern obviously you'll have to have this all edge mid and repeat it when it comes to next cell when it comes to next pattern so to do so to tessellate this better you could either create a two triangle or maybe Four triangle to fit right into this rectangle shape. Okay, so what I'll do, 
So create that structure. I'll create a triangle structure that will fit a portion of this rectangle. So you could go, you could, you could go with triangle, but this time I'm going to construct it from point, which is by the way covered in my first tutorial. So I won't go over this again. Construct point, and I'm going to move. So add. So what I will need, I'll go to the top view so I can visualize this better. And I'll probably speed this up for now just to avoid dragging on for somebody who already knows how to do this. I guess to add one Y addition, that goes there. And what we want here again is we want to have reverse. So that reverse goes to X. So this is all we need, and I'm going to cut them all again from the scratch. So that is to work together. And then this goes to three. Okay, so. okay, all I need is these two, and I'll use poly line. Fit it from the base point, second, third, and I'm going to close that to complete the triangle. So what I'll do now is I will offset this, offset curve, that goes there, and now I have that triangle. Let's set this a bit bigger, I'll give it a five. So what it has done is, okay, I'll we'll reduce it down to two, and I'll offset this by 0 0.3. Okay, so that's, that has just generated a triangle that will be our base pattern model, and I just spread it apart. So they have a generous space to complete this first uh, creating the pattern and what we want to do we want to loft this between these two poly so so let me just explain this again we'll have to flatten this to get the loft working so I got that loft what I'll do I'll set I'll give a depth by extruding this. So let's go back to perspective. Zoom right back in there. Hide the hide everything else. So that goes to base direction. So I've just created a three-dimensional object which is just triangle. But I will just explain you again. The reason that I'm creating triangle is that this can set as as a pattern that can be repeated, you know, regardless where it goes. So let, let me just rotate that. And I'll, I'll need to offset the other direction. So go express minus X. So what I've done, instead of offsetting outwards, I just offset it inwards so that when I rotate this to, to create a complete box, complete square, you won't interfere to it you won't interfere each other each triangle so i rotate this using rotate we'll, we'll need to rotate this four times to complete the shape complete the rectangle shape so that goes to rotate it's type series and i will we'll need only four count so the step will be I want this to rotate every 90 degree starting from 0 90 degree and you just need to change that to degree there you go and let's turn off the rest 
So you can see that I've just completed a pattern that can be repeated in either direction, up, bottom, right and left. So and this will, this can get repeated no matter where you where where this sits. Any geometry can adopt this as a pattern. So let's just cap this and cap pull. And this is now a complete geometry and boolean this boolean I want to union this by type solid union let's turn off this so the reason this is a very crucial because if you look at what the outcome of this you still have got four closed wrap to make it into one single union object united object you will have to solid union the uh, the four wrap that is touching each other obviously and we'll need a bounding box to define the size of this object okay so this is all we need to operate this 3d morph paneling tool so this object will take the boolean object and this bounding box goes here and that, let's drag it back here where it belongs type boolean toggle that goes to flatten and repeat then you will be able to see pattern is applied on the surface and let's turn on the preview there you go so it's been all covered up now let me just hide this preview for now and turn off the grid and turn off the surface you can see a bit better they are quite thick aren't they and and like I said, this is the, the depth of this structure has been determined by the distance between the first grid and the second grid. And let's take it down to 0 0.1. First, then we're going to just reduce the depth of the structure. Since it looks very dense, there is something to do with the actual size of this structure. You know how to, where to control this. This has all been controlled by this distance, offset distance between this triangle and that the second triangle that's been offset here. So let's bring it all the way down to 0.1. Once this triangle changes size, obviously the rest will respond back to the, the original object. So this looks better and a lot lighter and you know how to control these all now so we obviously given the offset curve that can grow then it will offset the second curve which will define the peak point it goes wider and let's let's make the base point slightly smaller Go back to four and it's calculating now. It looks much better now. Okay. And let's just off turn off the preview of the base object. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll cover the rest of paneling tool in other sessions, but this should be be able to give you the good insight of how you utilize this surface to manipulate the patterns on the on the surface thank you for watching i'll see you next time